So getting back to the subject of the teacher, the teacher doesn't give you the power. Okay, he or she only brings you there if if either and both are capable of such. Only through working towards the mysteries that you've been taught to gain that mastery, including hard and devastating failures as well as moments of success, which can sometimes fool you into thinking you already attained that which you know you're seeking prematurely if you're not careful. Um, in spite of all that, uh, they say uh, enlightenment can be found um, through paths self self enlightenment. Um, it's easiest if you've had some instruction um, or have a mentor to guide you on that path, but uh, it's important, um, you know, for those who've been told that they can achieve what they want by following um, another person. You know, we've gotten into topics of systems and whatnot prior. Um, so if you're not careful, um, you need to be able to ask, ask yourself, you know, what are you able to do? What have you been able to do? What have you seen? What do you think you have experienced on a true, a true mystical level? Um, the true teacher does not just put himself up on a pedestal for a follower, or for those to feed, feed the ego. A true master never announces his wisdom. He does not irreverently give a discourse on himself, a separate individual from you. It is the aspirant who succeeds or fails, and the guru, teacher, or method is not responsible for your accomplishments or failures. There are times when either the gods or the devils demons, what have, what have you, are going to test, for lack of a better word, um, and these, these, these are points to uh, see if your powers and endurance, that which you've learned from your teacher, uh, this is when it will be measured. And bear in mind the partnerships that partnership responsibilities that occur between teaching and learning are just that, they are responsibilities. Um, and when endurance fails, the magical way is to go beyond endurance into the realm of nature's power, the very power of the source. As we all have, at this juncture, the mortal spark within us that which causes us to fail, causes us to exist in the battle between light and darkness, if you want to call it like that. So every, every tradition contains this idea, um, but only through repeated practice can the seeker invoke it. Now. Don't deny your will by waiting for miracles to happen. If you put forth the energy and still can't find the answer, that's okay. It will arrive when you're ready to receive it. Each person has only one will, thus there is only one true path of enlightenment for that particular person, him or her. So, God will discreetly at some time in life present one with the path to Godhood. It requires work to become a fit and worthy receptacle for true enlightenment. If one were to encounter it before they were ready, then you wouldn't recognize it. So, if uh, the source were to just indiscriminately let enlightenment come to everyone, no matter what they did, then you would be deprived of your quest. So, you know, 
Man would already be perfect with no need to struggle through the obstacles that, that teach. If enlightenment was meant to just be simply by being born, then this would already be done for you. So instead, you have a will. And a few avatars were given the secret of perfection by God's divine intervention. But the search for oneself entails understanding the lower motivations and also aspiring to the mystical mountaintop where all prophets have had their experiences. The entire process revolves around the light that nature casts upon both the higher and the lower self.